Hey, it's Don the Arch Professor here today. We've got uh, some more of our haul. We're going to unbox some more of these records that we got. It's a massive assortment. Um, in the last day, we went through three boxes. That's all we went through. Um, didn't touch this huge monster stack here. Um, it's gotten a little bigger since we've moved some around to make some more room. Generally, when we buy records like this, we have a set amount that we usually expect to have to get rid of. If you buy a huge lot, you're going to get stuck with probably half of them or more aren't worth messing with. And that's just a typical example. So usually if I buy, say, 5,000 records, 2,000 of them I might keep, 2,400, 2,500 maybe at the most. So I anticipated dumping off half of these records at some local live auctions. I was going to break them up into three. Um, so far with the three boxes we've done, I have an 82% keep rate, which is extremely high. Um, the other ones may not uh, be junkers or anything, but I don't list or mess with records unless I'm getting $9.99 or better for the record. And that's going to be the actual asking price. You cannot mark up records beyond what other people sell them for. It does not work that way. Rare ones, maybe you can play the market for the highest one that's sold. If it's something that only shows up once or twice a year, that maybe sells for three or $4,000. But for the most part, I can't do that with records. There are some people, Tef Teller and a couple other, Craig Moyer and a few of these other people that sell a ton of records, they can get away with getting pretty much what they want. Their, their grading is impeccable. I, I don't think I've ever heard of an error with Craig's site, so you know, just keep that in mind. So you, you, you got to be known to get top dollar for these. I get pretty decent money for them. I sell them, as I said, on Amazon, eBay, and Discogs. So I've got three sources to sell these at, and I sell and dump off the ones at a local live auction, or in the past I've done, and still may do some still um, record shows where I'll dump off the cheapos, I'll get three, four, five bucks. It'll be a higher return on my investment than taking them to an auction. It'll be one day out of my life. I can crank out a lot. If I wanna blow them out, I can blow them out at a dollar and probably sell most of them, or get somebody in there who would just buy them off from me for more than I would get from an auction. Those are the, the rules of the game when you mess with records, so know your stuff when you're doing this we're going to go over some of the records here that i found um there's a couple high dollar ones in the front not by any specific um uh intention but um, i'm just going to show them to you in the order that i stacked them up here um this is the stack this right here is just what i pulled out just to show you um again i got 322 records total out of those three boxes that we pulled through and looked through i got a horrendous high count so my guess is a lot of these were instead of what i was thinking was just some guy's ratty collection it looks like there's a bunch of radio station mixed with somebody's better collection so it's something that i normally wouldn't get i have never in my life gotten something like this ever 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 never lucky enough i may get five thousand or ten thousand discs but the keep rate is very, very low when you get those massive quantities. You can still make money on them, um, like if you're buying a bunch of 45s and bulk them together. But let's show you some discs here. Um, I'm just not going to talk a ton about them, but we'll just show them. You can go go from there if it's something you like. Um, let me just do this. This is Billie Holiday. Uh, it's a first pressing. It's um, Lady in Satin. This disc right here goes for $225. So... You're going to see the math in a minute here, so just hang on as we do this. It is a Columbia 6i. That is a 6i first pressing. That is what you want. If it's a white label, it's a promo on this. Killer jazz. Killer, killer, killer. Excellent condition. Hopefully you can see that. It's an NM minus high dollar version of it. Um, I've only had one of these in my life, so you know I was extremely happy. This is roughly um, one-seventh of what we paid for everything. So I paid fourteen hundred and fifty bucks for this. I was set to go to five grand. So if that tells you what I was set to pay to, uh, at five grand I would have dropped out for sure. Um, this is an AOR. Um, it's basically done for record. It's a, like a rock heavy metal. It's a homemade one basically. Somebody's drawn that out and quickly um, uh, pressed it out here. It's not in great condition, but this is probably in the three hundred dollar range if I'm correct on it. I can't find a comp. A friend of mine referred me to a couple sales, and that's about the price ring. It's Rich, or Rick um, Asher is the person's name who did this heavy metal. So anyway, 300. I'm just going to flip through some. 45, it's Young Holt Unlimited. Soul, really good one. Soulful Strut. Detroit Emeralds, Do Me Right. 
Now there's the Emeralds and then there's the Detroit Emeralds. Those are two different groups, all in the sole category. This one's about 30 bucks. It's an ex excellent condition. Um, I've had other different groups similar to this name, so there's a bunch of them. You can see my usual posties. I do this for everything. These posties will stand through the photographing process, um, so that's just how I do it. Not for sale. This is a promo. Um, Tex-Mex right here. Uh, good stuff on this one, too. It's got some, like, rockabilly-style song uh, mixed with Latin. It's really kind of interesting and neat, so like a Johnny Rivers kind of stuff, though. If you know who Johnny Rivers is, you know what I'm talking about. Alex Bradford. Now, these kind of records I scout out everywhere I go. Most people pass up the the soul gospel records. I grab them. I grab every one I can get my hands on. Usually I can get them really cheap because most people don't mess with the religious. But just like I mess with religious postcards, religious trade cards, religious greeting cards, um, artifacts, whatever I can find religious, the music sells too. So anyway, Killer One, 45 bucks. Tuskegee, um, Pilots came from here. You can look it up if you want. We're not going to go into a bunch of detail on all of these. More religious. 75 bucks for these two. This one here goes for like 50 on its own. So look it up. You can see it right there. You can pause it. Go up if you're questioning any of the prices on these. But these are pretty legit prices. These aren't what the top end is. This is what I expect to get out of these records. I'll blow some of these out at the prices you see. Um, if I put some of these up, I, I'll pretty much guarantee you 5%, 10%, maybe even more in this case will go real, real quick. So this is St. Paul AME Zion Church, Toledo, Ohio. Soul Gospel, killer one. Um, this is really a funk one too. So 20 bucks on this one. Nothing fancy, but it'll be gone out the door really quick. You wait and see. Here's another funk one. Now look up Mammy Jackson. Um, let me see. You can see the cover. Excellent cover. Nice imagery on the cover. Local one. These are all local. So, you know, that's whoever bought this did buy these. This all stands to reason with a radio station because they play religious. Soundtracks could be on there for classical and stuff like that as well too. So everything I see in here it just calls out that this was bought or, or acquired or storage from a radio station maybe around here. So anyway, this one's worth 125 bucks. That's in the condition that the record's in. That's not a fantasy number. That's not the high end. That's compared to three or four different sites. That's what this one goes for. So uh, altogether, it's over $4,000 worth of discs I pulled out of those first three boxes. That's a crazy amount. Nothing I've ever seen before like that. Curtis Fuller, boss of the Soul Stream um, trombone, jazz, 60 bucks. This is Chris, Chris Connor, um, jazz again. This is on a, yeah, it's on a Bethlehem. Let me see if I can carefully, so you can see it. Not in perfect condition. If it was in better condition, it would go for more of these vocal jazz from the 50s, go for some good money. So 30 bucks on this one, 60 if it was better. Uh, this is Jose Madeira, Havana. Um, these Latin ones like this, um, the cha-cha-cha, these go very well. Um, cha-cha fuego, cha-cha fire, it's um, a good one here. Um, and it's actually Carlos Montoya on the other side of this one. These are typical what I see, even in this condition. These are from like the Miami area, usually it's on a master, um, I think it's Master Seal, yeah, which for the most part wasn't a great label, but they've got some good ones. 34 bucks. I've sold many almost identical to this in that same range, you know, left and right, so... Next one's one of my favorites. I'm going to get this one closer here. Um, Tales of the Frightened. Uh, the big key one on this, let me move this off here. Big key one, that's Boris Karloff. These soundtracks, people pass up the soundtracks and the kid ones all the time. This one is a good one. I promise you, look this one up. I priced it at 70 because it's in mint, mint condition. I mean, all the way around. It's just a real nice disc. Hopefully you can see that there. I mean, this is just spot on, dead mint copy, full gloss, no peeling, um, no distracting factors. It's a stereo on top of it. It's the best version of this one you can get. This is just a primo one. This is something most people would keep and sit on the wall, horror collectors and things like that. This is a key one. This one has cross category interest, so good one. Bill Moss, Gospel Soul again. 45 bucks. It's a local one. Living, uh, yeah, this is a living stereo. And it's a red uh, seal on here. That dog on there. There's two versions of this. You'll see it now. Look in titles. Look up living stereo. Um, and um, you will see what I'm talking about. Red seal. There's two versions of this dog. One is shaded. This is the shaded version of the dog. This is the best one you can get. This is original. There's another version where the dog's just basically outlines without the shading on it. It's worth 
a third of this or less. This one's worth 35 because of it being first. It's got an S1 stamper. It's correct for the first pressing. I look for these. I do look for these. There's an Elvis 45 um, in compacts that say Living Stereo. This is worth like $1,000. So I always look for Living Stereo. It's a good one. Let's move on here a little quicker here. Priscilla Paris. Uh, Pop Vocal, 75 bucks. Um, as I said, uh, look these up if you have any questions on them. Um, you'll see them. Look up Pop Psych, look up eBay, and pull Discogs up all at the same time. You can pull up Craig's site. I've talked about it. You can look back in some of my other videos for grading it out. You'll see those in there too. Etta James. This is a real good one here. It's on an Argo label. This is an, a, um, I think it's the, what is it called? Audio Odyssey by Argo. It's some of the best stereo of this era by them. Uh, it's a $50 record because of condition. It's got some issues, so if it was better, it would be worth more money. Let me move these off here real quick. Again, this is just part of what came out of those first three boxes. This is local Bowling Green um, University. This is um, Jazz Lab Band. This is like the Jazz Club or something along that line. I sell these locally even. I can take this to a local show and it'll be gone the same day. I may let a buddy have this one here. Um, anyway, locals will buy it because it's still relatively new, 1970. There'll still be some people who are in this around here. I figure 45 bucks is a very fair estimate considering what I sold some of the other Bowling Green ones for. So anyway, the Shirelles, 65 bucks. This is a live one. Um, I don't have to tell the, the hard rock people or the 70s children what this is. Um, everybody should know this one here if you're at least 30, I would hope. Um, it's Led Zeppelin 4. This is a first pressing. Um, Jerry out there, Jerry, I know you watched the videos. You made a comment um, on um, writing on the just um, uh, the Joe Walsh single. That is a first edition, first pressing. That was hand etched, those wordings in there. It was only done in the first so many by the person doing that, one of the actual, um, I guess he would be the, the mixer of it. This one here is the same issue. This is the first one. It says Pecos. Let me see, I wrote it down so I didn't mix it up. Peco duck on one side and porky on the other. Now, there's some that say other things on it, too, where they made some statements and things on it. It's hand engraved into the dead wax between the center um, section and the actual tracks. That's typical, and so are the stampers. They're all hand engraved as they should be. This one here, because of that, just because somebody etched that in there, it's worth 45 bucks. So I'm a Zeppelin fan. They used to play Get the Lead Out Here every Friday. Maybe they still do. I don't know. I don't listen to the radio. It's all... Um, XM radio these days. Sound Foundation, um, Garage Rock, 60 bucks. Uh, let's see here. Joe Satriani, 15 or so bucks is what I got out of the last one. I expect to get that out of this one. Again, this one's like mint, you know. I can't argue with these. The condition is just incredible. Um, again, I don't usually get them this good. It's just not something you find, especially this close to Motor City because there's so many other dealers here. I got a, a real luck on this one here. Kansas, Kansas, um, about 10 bucks a piece. I'm going to put them a lot. I've got a couple other ones. I just pulled a few just to show you. Another Rush for you Rush fans, double LP. These are like 15, 20 bucks. Uh, this is a disc jockey album. It has like sampling of many, so you could just play these and play them off of here instead of sending you multiple records. These are legit. These are from Capital Stereo. 10, 15 bucks a piece. Easy any day of the week. Quick sellers. They've got some good stuff on them as well. Let me keep popping these back over here so I can get them out of their way. Uh, here's a compilation. Now, this is from Todlin Town, which is another Detroit soul label. The 45s are usually really good. This one here, it's a compilation. It's got many songs like Otis Clay and things like that. This one's probably about 15, 20 bucks. Here is another wall. Now, I noticed um, the other one, I misset spoke that it had a, it didn't have a barcode. It did have a barcode. It was a different pressing. This one does not. So I'm assuming they have several copies of different versions of it because that's what we've been finding. doesn't bother me. It's an original. It has markings and engravings on the dead wax as well, too. So 30 bucks on this one here. Olivia Newton-John. It's a gold edition, ja a Japanese version. Um, let me see if it still has... I think it had the... Let me see if I can find it. This one was a little different. It had the actual strip from Japan that would have went around it. So this one's worth about 24 bucks. You can look up again. That's about mid-range for what these sell for. I'm being optimistic. I'm not looking at the high end on these at all. I would rather blow them out at, say, 20% under what everybody else does. I've got so much here value-wise. Um, and not crazy value. Not like I'm just throwing some crazy price out. 
Tennyson Geyer, he is a, or was a, um, U.S. Senator from Ohio. Seen stuff by him before. He was a motivational speaker in his day. He saw all the presidents and people called him um, for advice. Um, he actually signed it. I don't know if you can see it. I'm putting 75 bucks on it. This is going in the political section, actually. So, um, And again, uh, 1450 is what I have into this. Patrick Juvet, this is a Quebec. Yeah, this is Quebec. Um, it's French, so that, that's just typical of what you see. It's jazz, um, like a funk jazz, Paris by Night. 20 bucks. that's about average for this version of it. There's several versions. Atik, this is a reel-to-reel -reel advertising uh, record. You can see that. Now, these aren't super, super rare, but I get like 10, 15 bucks on them um, as a buy it now. No make an offer. Um, and I just let them run until they sell. So anyway, here is a night in Spain. Augusto Alguero, um, probably butchered the name, but I've sold several of this exact one. Uh, Montilla is the name. It's like a Tex-Mex kind of a, as well. It's from New York area, at least the label is, but you'll find these in, in, in um, the Spanish markets and stuff. We go to some of the Spanish flea markets. Food's awesome there, so you know you can't beat that. So anyway, let's move on to Keith Jarrett, the Köln concert. This is an EMI. This is a German. Oh, no, it's actually, this is a U.S. version of it. Um, there's a German version that's that looks just like this too. Jazz again. Um, it's a like a custom press double disc from Köln, Germany. It's a concert, so this is really good. Forty bucks. That's average. Now I I got excited on this one here. I thought it was the new Lord of the Rings. If this was the new Lord of the Rings, it would have been worth some big money. Um, but this is actually the 1978, I think. Um, cartoon version of it. I think Don Bluth or something maybe did it. Um, I remember they had toys out for this because I remember, you know, I, I didn't get them, but I remember seeing them in the store. So not worth a ton of money, 14, 15 bucks, but it's somebody's going to put this on a wall. I guarantee it. This won't last long. Aerosmith, now this is a Chinese pressing. So I'm guessing 45 based on other ones I sold. Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits, 15 bucks. This one has a poster in it that I was talking about that sells for 80 bucks. I was hoping the poster was in here. It wasn't, but still, 15 bucks for the record. Again, all of these so far have been spotless. I mean, just literally like they've been sitting around forever um, and never played, which is typical for radio stations. They might have played a song a couple of times. It wasn't a big hit, and they never played it again. That's why I always look for when a radio station is going under or they're moving or something, look around for those kind of sales. It's always the best. Now, somebody's going to say something about this one um, based on my Halloween show. Yes, I do like the group. This is their first one, self-titled one. If this version is worth 40 bucks, if it didn't have Kissing Time on it, this record would have been worth 100 They changed the song lineup um, mid-run on these, so it's very hard to come by. So the original one, without Kissing Time. Um, limited number of those were pressed. So most everybody sees the one with Kissing Time, which is what this one is. Casablanca, typical title. Um, the dark version is the best one, the darker colored one instead of the beige. Just got a couple more, then I'm going to show you some numbers real quick. We're going to bring the wife on in here, and we're going to look through, through some more records, and you'll be the first to see them just as we are with some of these. I, again, I only looked at these three boxes and what you've already seen, and that's it. Oh, well, I'll take that back. I looked at one more box before I bought them, or box worth, I should say. Here is a German Nemes, um, Black Sabbath. You can't beat it. You know, War Pigs, the whole works. Paranoid, it's one of the best albums they have. 60 bucks, average price, mint condition, really nice looking one. Uh, this is Missouri. Uh, it's a private press group, cheapo label. Um, 15 bucks or so, nothing special. It's a cut corner. Um, clearance, basically, is what that means. Same with the hole in them. Now, this one here I've never had, uh, just because I'm not lucky enough to run into some of these. This is Leonard Skinner. Now, not only is this Leonard Skinner, for those of you who know the history of Leonard Skinner and listen to some of their songs, there was a bad plane wreck, um, and one of the band members died. Maybe more than one. I'm not really sure. I don't remember. I know one died um, in the plane wreck in a fiery crash, and this cover was pulled from the market after only being out for a very short time. So the new version of this does not have the flames in it. So this is a band cover. They pulled this from the ranks. There's a Blind Faith cover that has some nudity on it that they've pulled and some other ones like that. Um, so it happens, but this one's worth a lot more money. Um, the actual price based on this, um, the condition and all, is about 120 bucks. These can go up to like $300 with the fire in the back of this one. Look it up. Look it up. Do some comps. I keep telling you, do your own comps too. Look up some of these. 
Um, one of my favorites. So I love the the Doors. Um, Can't beat the Doors album. It's an original gatefold, excellent condition. The lyrics, the whole works. Um, it's not worth a ton of money, sixty bucks or so. The record's pretty good. It's a VG plus, not as good as a near mint, but you know. And then uh, let's see, Dick Roman, just an oddball pop teen idol at the time. Nothing really fancy. Um, most of his don't go for very much. This is like in mint condition. It's got the cello on it still. It's never been played. It looks like to me which is what most of these are. And it's on a, I don't really want to yank the label out, but it's on a label that usually doesn't do this type of music. So 15 bucks. These are, again, sale price. This, is, this isn't some fantasy price. This is me going to blow them out prices. So um, electronic hair pieces. This is Moog. Um, M-O-O-G. It's a synthesizer. I always look for Moog. Moog music can sell. It pretty much almost always sells. I love the... The futuristic, um, artistic artwork um, styling covers on Moog. Um, they do anything in Moog. I've, I've heard Led Zeppelin in Moog, um, Beethoven in Moog. It's massive digital synthesizers is what it is. So anyway, this one's worth about 30 bucks. Again, this is mid-range. These are mid-range prices. Everything I'm giving you, I'm going to blow these out. It's going to be a quick turn on my money, and it's going to put some big money in the bank for a massive investment in this summer and some investment in some artwork and other things that we're going to be doing. So I'm going to pop you over here right now. We're going to cut over to numbers, and then we're going to bring out Marky, and we are going to show you some more of random items that we have here. So I'm going to flip this over to the screen, and we are going to go from there. So these are the breakdowns on the first three boxes, literally just the first three boxes. The record count was 7,850, roughly. I did not count every record. We estimated, I did a projection, and I've talked about projections all the time. I did a projection based on the three boxes that I did count every disc in. Cost of the entire lot was $1,450. I have roughly $160 in labor for a total investment in $1,610 gas, I'm not counting. Um, first three boxes netted 322 records. Of those records, I'm only keeping 264 of them because they have a value of $10 plus. Um, average value on the records based on the actual calculated cost across for looking up everyone, an honest to God, let's middle range them all estimate of those first three boxes of what we are going to get. You saw value on just the few that I showed you, $4,488 for the first three boxes and that's with getting rid of a bunch of records roughly what 60 or so i can still get a few dollars for those as well as i said i may do a record show just to get some pumped out average value on those i think is 17 dollars a record we have an 82 percent keep rate that means 82 out of every 100 records i am hanging on to because they have a value enough to fall into my range of let's keep the record so that's what i look at i look at a keep rate Whatever I do, whenever I'm doing big bulk buys like this, it's the keep rate that I they worry about. I over, uh, I should say I underestimated how many I would get to keep. I thought I would be keeping less than 50% at the very, you know, most. So I didn't expect to have to worry about sorting these. So we're going to have to probably take some of these over. Um, if, if you saw how much it took up in the, the car, just think of those standing up in stacks all over the house. Um, basement's pretty full. I'm picking up 5,000 records tomorrow. They're 45s, thank God, which don't take up so much space. So anyway, you see the numbers here. <clears throat> now these are not fictitious. This is not going to turn around. I'm going to have all this money tomorrow. If, if it continues where it's an 82% keep rate, again, these are projections. I project everything out. Um, I'm going to have um, 6,437 records that I will keep out of my initial 7,850 uh, record purchase. If the value still stays at the value of $17 across it, that's over $100,000 in records. If I threw out half of those, and let's say I'm not even, I'm just so off, even though these are, these are mid-range estimates, this is a projection. It doesn't mean that's exactly what's going to happen. This is what business does for sales projections based on inventory, um, routine sales of inventory, sell-through rate, and all that kind of stuff too. So I talked about sell-through rate. Look it up if you're interested. This is potentially $100,000 worth of records. I'm not saying I'm going to get that, but that is a very, very high potential. I'm not going to give any percentages. Who knows? The worst case scenario, I take home thirty dollars or $40,000, and it takes me a year or two to sell some of these. Big whoop. 
A thousand dollars I could I could easily see cranking out a month for the next couple of years extra by this. So I invest fifteen sixteen hundred dollars and I can get a return on my investment at twelve thousand dollars. Well, minus the fees and the initial investment, uh, probably the first year eight thousand. Second year it's going to go up because I won't have the the initial costs and things like that. So twelve thousand. I, I could sell a ton the first first couple of months I put them up and greatly increase that. But anyway, we're gonna bring the wife in here and we're gonna just look through some more records. I have no idea what we're going to pull out. Um, I did find an adult record, so we may be a little more cautious on pulling them out. It had some nudity on the cover. They're called Beefcake when you see nudity on a cover. Marilyn Monroe, Jane Mansfield, all those kind of people are on covers with nudity on them. So we're going to cut back to the screen here. We're back. She's here. Marky's with us today. Um, we both love music. I'm not going to get back into that. Again, look at the other video. You'll see us if you want to see what it's like to bring in 8,000 almost records into a house. It's a massive amount of work. Um, but anyway, let's get right to the fun part. This is the funnest part of it. Everybody likes this part. Everybody likes digging through them. So again, we'll let the wife pull out, you know, a stack or something and we'll pull through those and go from here. I have not looked at these. I promise you, um, I have, I've got so many, even if I wanted to, I couldn't look through all these records. So, um, we just pick some, I don't know all these, the fact, the first one on here, I've never even heard of cartoon. Cartoon. Anybody knows what that is? Oh, ooh, look at that. Mm. You can kind of see yeah. how it goes. I have no idea who they are. It's a gatefold. Um, it looks like garage or psych. Again, psych in the title is psychedelic, so just keep that in mind. Let's see if there's anything we recognize on here. Mr. Poor Man, Ice Cream Dreams, A Penny for the Sun. It's an original Atlantic. Uh, let's move on, I guess. We'll see what else we got. Well, that's the end of this part of the video here. We actually shot a whole long length of video, but for ease of, of actually uploading and the whole works to put this on YouTube, we're going to split this up into two different parts. Um, next part will actually be us um, just going through a bunch of records. Again, I could go through records for a long time. Um, there's just literally almost 8,000 records here. So I may do a couple more if we get more comments and more people interested in seeing what's in here. There's a ton of interesting and oddball records to go through. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend. And don't forget that we will have the second part of this coming up literally just after this still today.